fan we are back out here for day number 14 on how to improve your relationship by three times the amount and so today we're going to talk about why you should set time aside to reflect on you as well as the relationship um, why should you reflect on yourself and on the relationship self-reflection is one of the best ways to shift your mindset to increase your productivity in your life as well as in your relationship and to discover a greater connect connection between yourself as well as the connection between you and your spouse so what is self-reflection -re self-reflection is all about self-awareness so you have to be aware of yourself who are you showing up to be how are you actually showing up while you're in the relationship what are you doing to make the relationship a better relationship to be a part of what um, um, what are you doing and what are you noticing about yourself that you don't like about yourself and how can you correct these things so actually we talked about um, what did we talk about yesterday <laughs> we talked about how you need to uh, reflect on yourself yesterday and I just want to come here and specifically say that you need to take time to reflect on who you're showing up as why you're showing up up as that person and how you can create correct said um, those behaviors that you just don't like how about that the behaviors that you do not like how can you correct those things so we need to take some time to just sit back and think about this stuff to take a deep dive and really think about the way that you are actually showing up hey Tate I see you thanks for watching and coming back um, yes but so many of us actually want to jump to the next level in our relationships that we've not even taken the time to really see what's actually going on today right now here in the moment in our current relationship how are you showing up what are you actually doing to again make the relationship better how are you preparing to um, create this best relationship so you can show up and be the best person that you can be not only in life again also in your relationship and so there are several questions that you should ask yourself several questions just to reflect on how you're showing up and um, who are you being in your relationship why are things going sometimes down the rabbit hole uh, how can you correct these behaviors and so I have about let's see about six questions that I wrote down for you that I want you to just think about and you can always come back and get the questions later um, if you want to write them down so the first question that you need to ask yourself is what are your destructive behaviors that appear in your life as well as in your relationship what are you doing sis what are you doing bruh what you doing that art that is destroying your relationship it could be something that is very minor to you but over a period of time it be can become something major so what are you doing what is the destructive behavior maybe you're the person that always lashes out or maybe you're the person that always blames maybe you're the person that always accuses your partner of doing something when they're not doing anything but you in your mind in your head you have it in your head to say I know that he is out there doing something I know that she out there doing something so why do they need to not do this stuff since they're already being blamed for it right what self-destructive behaviors are you um, bringing into your relationship and are the cause of some of these things going downhill so that's the first thing what or I should say have you that hit home Tata I'm just saying I'm just saying what destructive behaviors are you are you doing in your own relationship right the second thing to think about is are you taking responsibility for the for your patterns are you taking responsibility for your patterns or or are you at the stage again of blaming your spouse for for the way that you feel because here's the thing your spouse can't make you feel a certain way you are internalizing whatever it is that is going wrong in your head you're internalizing that stuff and these are actually your own thoughts and so they're showing up in the way of you blaming your spouse or basically it's, it's showing up in the way of your fears so whatever it is that you're fearful about going downhill in your relationship is usually what is going to go down in your relationship because that is what you are attracting into your life. That is what, it, what you are attracting into your relationship. So the more you focus on whatever the bad behavior is, the more you are going to attract it to your life. Hey, Chandra, I see you, girl. Thanks for watching. 
The next question that you need to think about is what negative messages have you been telling yourself that allows you to stay stuck in those destructive behaviors? What are you telling yourself about yourself when nobody else is around? When your spouse is not around, when you can't vent, when you try to call everybody on the phone and nobody picks up the phone, what are you telling yourself about yourself? What destructive behaviors are you telling yourself about yourself? You know what? I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Let, let's go with cheating because everybody always go with cheating. Even though there's so many other things that could go wrong in your relationship. But everybody always goes to cheating. So let's, let's stick there. Okay? Let's go with the familiar. So you're like, you know what? He ain't treat me right. She ain't treat me right. So what I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to go out here tonight and I'm going to find somebody to have a one night stand with. Think about it. You gonna go out there and have your one night stand because you are not getting what you need to get. Which I'm not saying that you shouldn't get what you want. I'm just saying in this particular point, cheating is not the answer. Cheating is actually never the answer. Cheating is never the answer because all of your issues and all of your problems can be solved by the very person that you are in a relationship with. Now, if you are too scary, now if you're too scary to talk to your partner, hey Tamika, I see you. Thanks for watching. If you're too scary to talk to your partner, then that's another issue. But again, it's your issue. It's not your spouse's issue, the issue that you are scared to come and talk about the things that you need to talk about, the things that are bothering you. They are not mind readers. Our spouses, our partners, our girlfriends, our boyfriends, our fiancés, they are not mind readers. And so if you're not speaking up and telling them what you need, telling them what you want, they'll never know. They shouldn't have to guess what you want, what you need. They shouldn't have to guess on that. So that's a part of your own self-destructive behaviors that you are bringing into, into the relationship. Your thoughts. Your thoughts. What are they telling you? The next question to think about is, in what way are these destructive behaviors protecting or serving you? Because there are reasons behind the way you are acting. You're acting the way that you act because maybe... In your past relationship, you got treated a certain way, so ain't nobody going to get you this time. Or maybe your um, parents or siblings, whoever your guardian was that brought you up with, they didn't treat you the way that you felt that you needed to be treated. They didn't show you as much attention as you felt that you needed to get. And so all of this stuff is now showing up in your relationship. And so actually what's happening is the destructive behaviors are secretly destroying your relationship one tiny thing at a time. Yeah, I'm quiet because I need that to sink in. One tiny thing at a time. Each time is chipping at your relationship. It's chipping at your relationship. It's chipping at your relationship. Sis, we got to get this under control. Bruh, we got to get this under control. If we don't get this under control, then guess what? We will be a part of the divorce rate. And trust me, like I told y'all before, maybe y'all knew. Because I've had several people request me friend requests. Listen, you have the power to stop <laughs> these outsiders getting into your relationship you have the power to turn your relationship around but you gotta stop being scary you gotta stop looking outside and talking to all of these outsiders about what's going on in your relationship they cannot fix your relationship boo only you can only your partner can both of you guys working together is the only way your relationship is going to be fixed so the destructive behaviors what are they doing to to protect you how are they serving you and then do these destructive behaviors actually serve you and your relationship think about it are they really serving your relationship or are they helping to tear down your relationship yeah yeah what are they doing think about it the next question to ask yourself is what stories are you telling yourself about yourself when nobody else is around you, when your spouse is not around you, when your spouse is being difficult? What stories are you telling yourself about yourself? Maybe you don't, maybe you secretly, because it's usually all up in here, maybe you secretly do not believe that you deserve a healthy relationship. Maybe you secretly believe that the person that you are in a relationship with they too good for you and so because you're having these thoughts hey hey Charmaine I see you girl thanks for watching sissy poo <laughs> 
Um, so maybe you are in your head about this person, about the guy, about the girl. Maybe you feel that they are too good for you. And so because you feel that they are too good for you, you're secretly destroying your relationship. You're secretly putting out all of these vibes that you're not good enough. You're starting all of these unnecessary arguments. You're running out the house doing all of these unnecessary things, bringing all of this turmoil to your own relationship. You're causing all this stuff, all because of what the stories that you were telling yourself about yourself when nobody else is around, because nobody else can read our mind. And this is why a lot of people don't like to um, actually sit and have deep thought, as I talked about in one of my other videos. Because that deep thinking will have you thinking, damn, I'm just not good enough. I'm not good enough for him, I'm not good enough for her. I don't know why they're here. I don't know why they treat me so good. I don't know why I be acting a damn fool. So you got all of these I don't know why's, all of these I don't, I don't know why's. But a lot of it is stemming from our childhood. The things that we did not receive in our childhood that we have not dealt with. And all of that stinking thinking, all of that stinking thinking is showing up in your relationship. It's showing up in the way that you are reacting or the way that you are acting. The way that you think about yourself, the way that you think about your spouse, the way that you think about relationships in general. How do you think about relationships in general? Do you think that they're actually good? Do you think the marriage is good? Not get it. Marriage is not for everybody. Everybody's not going for marriage. That's not what I'm preaching. What I am talking about right here is what are you doing in your relationship? How are you showing up in your relationship? How are you contributing to the healthy part of your relationship? Have you dealt with your baggage? Have you dealt with your childhood traumas? All of us have some. All of us have some. And all of us are bringing that baggage to our current relationships. And then we're wondering, why the hell it ain't working out? It's because you have not dealt with your childhood traumas. It's because you have not dealt with your childhood baggage. A lot of people don't even know what that childhood baggage is. But here's a quick way to tell that you have some baggage, that you have some issues that you need to deal with. Anytime something do, does not go the way that you feel that it needs to go in your relationship, you start to lash out. And then after that lashing out, you're like, why did I do that? I wish I would have handled that better. So then you have the guilt that comes after the way that you reacted to whatever the situation was. And then we have the nerve to be so, um, I'm not going to go and apologize. So then you want to stay in your feelings because you knew, even though, even though we know we'd be wrong sometimes, we still don't want to apologize. So what stories are you telling yourself about yourself when your spouse is not around, especially in the difficult times in your relationship? What stories are you telling yourself? And then the final question that you need to ask is, what do you need to do in order to transform these destructive patterns into healthy patterns? What do you need to do? Specifically, what do you need to do? Think about all of these questions. If you need to come back and watch this video later to, later to write them down, then do just that. We have to do the work, sis. We gotta do the work, bruh. If you don't do the work, trust me, nobody's gonna stick around. They will stick around for a period of time, but after a while, that stuff gets so old. It gets so old real quick. It's like, why am I trying to continue to validate myself to this person when they don't even love themselves? Why should I love them as hard as I'm trying to love them? I'm really trying to get them to see how much I respect them, how much I love them, how much I honor them, etc., etc. And then they're ready to run out the door because after a while that gets old. The garbage truck, really? <laughs> coming outside and doing these live videos sometimes you just never know what you're gonna get so the garbage truck decided that they needed to come on by but anywho getting back to this seriously though what are you going to do to, in order to prove improve your relationship over these next 30 days what are you willing to do it needs to meet it needs to be a drastic measure that needs to be taken and a lot of us like I was saying a lot of us need to do the work if you do not do the work you can only stay around in that muck for so long. You can only stay around in that muck for so long. Your spouse can only stay around in your muck for so long. Take some time. Come back later. Write down these questions and actually do the work. 
figure out who you actually are figure out why you are showing up and doing the things that you are doing the way uh, why you are reacting the way that you are reacting it's going to make a difference See, y'all, be, you've been watching these videos because you want to improve your relationship. But you can't just watch the videos and not do the work. If you want to improve your relationship, sis, you got to do the work. I'm able to come here and talk about doing the work because I had to do it myself. I had to do it myself. I had to deal with my own childhood issues and how everybody teased me about my black skin, my dark skin. I had to, love, I had to learn to love me. If you don't like it, I, I don't even care at this point. <laughs> I love me. I didn't do that when I was in school. And I didn't even take up for myself while I was in school, being teased. And then going away from school, coming out into the real world, I had to deal with my own low self-esteem, as well as how do I navigate through this dating thing? I had to deal with my own stuff. So I'm able to come here and tell you that you gotta deal with your own stuff in order for your relationship to work out because I had to do it myself. And everybody that's in a healthy relationship had to do the work because not to blame our parents because we know as parents even now there is no rule book so they did the best with the best that they could do what they had but now at this point I'm 42 I can't blame my parents for the relationship that I want to create I have to create it myself I can't continue to blame my parents for not telling me X Y and Z I got to go out there and get it myself, y'all. Now it's your time to go out there and get it yourself. Create the relationship that you want to have. And if you want further instructions on this, of course, continue to follow the videos. We are in uh, day 14, so we got uh, 16 more days to go out of 30. At some point, I'm going to take a QA. and a I'm actually probably going to do that on the last day. But what I was going with that is if you need some more information on how to create your love life, Y'all know that I have a book now, 20 Ways to Create an Awesome Love Story. Go ahead and check it out on Amazon. It has 4.6 out of 5 stars on there. I'm just talking real life, simple tips, they proven strategies. I use them myself. Every, everybody that's read the book, they're, they're using it with their, with their men. They're actually doing the work. They're seeing the progress. You can see the progress too. So if this is your first time here, I have 13 other videos already just go on my homepage and just start going through them. I give you action steps on there too. Just do the work. Do the work, you'll see the results. I'll see you guys here for day 15 tomorrow. About the same time. Deuces.